Hey, Goblin, you've been really practicing those war drums. i will bring the generic Goblin noise! Hey, gang. Using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Today's game is another one filmed with some of the Jersey Boys, and Ryan is playing Bruce Tarl and Akiri. Harry is playing Tyam, Luminous Enigma. Trevor is playing Fraley's Lanawar's Fury, and I'm playing Cranko Mob Boss. This is the game that asks which of the tribes is better, goblins or elves. Trevor wins the die roll and starts us off. Trevor plays a forest. I play a mountain and cast Skirk Prospector. Ryan plays a plains and casts Steel Shaper's Gift. He tutors into his library and reveals a Sunforger, putting it to hand and passing. Harry plays a tap slippery karst, passing turn. Trevor plays a wasteland and casts a soul ring. He then taps the rest of his mana for a Farhaven elf who comes in and goes to find him a tap basic. I play a buried ruin for turn and cast goblin bombardment. I have sack outlets for days and I pass to Ryan. Ryan plays a sunbaked canyon and loses one life as he taps both of his lands to cast a Kiri. Harry plays a tap secluded step and passes turn. Trevor plays out a wirewood lodge and then casts wood elves. He shortcuts before going to search knowing he'll have enough mana to cast a reclamation sage. With the sage entering he rudely and might I add completely unnecessarily blows up my goblin bombardment. He then adds insult to injury by hitting me with the Farhaven Elf and passes. I draw and cast Faithless Looting, drawing two and discarding two. I pitch Reforce the Soul and Shared Animosity. I then play an Isolated Watchtower as my land drop, passing. Ryan plays an Ancient Den and then taps three mana for a Commander Sphere. He goes to combat hitting Trevor for two with a Vigilant Akiri, and passes. Harry plays a third cycle land for the game, Baron Moor, and then taps two mana for Devoted Druid, and passes. Trevor plays a forest, and taps five mana for Fraley's. He upticks her to make an Elf Druid token. We then see three mana get tapped for a Growing Rites of Itlamok, and as it enters, he looks at his top four. He reveals a fierce empath, which goes to his hand. Trevor then passes through his phases, and at his end step, transforms the growing rites into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. I draw for turn, and tap two mana to cast Cheering Fanatic. I then pass to Ryan. Ryan plays a tap Temple of Triumph, scrying one. He bottoms that card. Four mana then gets him a Hedron Archive, and he then taps the Archive to cast Sanctuary Blade, one of my spoiler cards. He then goes to combat, swinging a Kiri at Fraley's. Trevor decides to chump with his Wood Elves, and Ryan passes turn. Harry plays a Snow-Covered Plains for turn, and casts Golgari Signet. He activates the Signet and taps the rest of his mana for Tyam, and passes as the Commander enters. Trevor casts Azuri in his main phase, with one mana still floating from the Soul Ring. He then casts a Fierce Empath, but before searching, down takes Fraley's to blow up the Sanctuary Blade on Ryan's side of the board. He then goes to tutor for a creature card with the Empath trigger, revealing Ulvenwald Hydra. He taps the Itlamok for five and one more land to cast the Hydra. It comes in, and Trevor tutors for a land this time. He announces he'll go and find Gaia's Cradle, and passes to me while searching. I draw and cast Blasphemous Act for one red. Trevor responds once he gains priority, regenerating the Reclamation Sage and Fierce Empath. Responding to his response, I sacrifice my two goblins to the Skirk Prospector to make two red mana. The wipe then resolves, and after it's done, I bring out Krenko and pass to Ryan. 
Ryan recasts Akira in his main phase and then plays out his copy of Secluded Step. It comes in tapped, and he taps the rest of his mana for the earlier revealed Sunforger, passing turn. Harry plays an Indatha Trio Mrs. Land for turn, and then plays out Sakura Tribe Elder. Steve gets a friend as Harry casts a Knight of Autumn, who enters and gives Harry a choice. He decides to have the Knight blow up Trevor's Soul Ring, and then passes, sacrificing the Sakura Tribe Elder to go and find a basic. Trevor casts an Elvish Reclaimer in his main phase, and then upticks Fraley's to make a friend. Itlamok then gets tapped for four, and two forests join in as Trevor casts a Thunderfoot Bayloth. He then taps his Cradle for five, and casts Natural Order. He sacrifices the Empath as part of the cost, and goes to find a green creature from his library. Surprisingly, it's not Crater Hoof Behemoth, but instead a Regal Force. It enters, and sees five green creatures, drawing him five cards. One of those cards is Kadama's Reach, which Trevor casts and goes to find a basic for the field and one for his hand. He then passes as he discards down to seven. I play a Snow-Covered Mountain and simply cast a Goblin Chieftain and pass to Ryan. Ryan untaps and gears up Akiri with the Sunforger. He can't really swing Akiri at Trevor because of the Baylos pump, so I sadly get smacked for eight commander damage, and Ryan passes. In his main phase, Harry taps a good amount of mana to recast his commander, Tyum, and passes to Trevor. Trevor draws and starts his main phase off by cycling a Desert of the Indomitable. He draws as he cycles the land and plays a forest before upticking Freilies again to make another elf druid token. Cradle and a forest get tapped so Trevor can play Siege Behemoth and he goes to combat. The regal force swings at Harry, who just takes the seven. Trevor then passes, and at the end of turn, I tap Krenko to make two goblin tokens. Ryan also gets in on the action, disattaching Sunforger from Akiri to go and get a spell from his library. It's Dispatch, which has Metalcraft active, and he targets Trevor's Bayloth. This resolves, and the Bayloth gets exiled. I draw for turn, playing a snow-covered mountain. I then activate Krenko in my main phase, making four more goblin tokens. I decide I don't want Freilies to use her ultimate, and swing all six of my 2-2 goblin tokens at her. Trevor blocks one with the Siege Behemoth, and lets the rest go through. This may have me losing a token, but Trevor loses what I think is the more valuable Freilies. I then pass to Ryan. At the end of my turn, Trevor taps the Idlamok to help pay for Force of Vigor. He targets Ryan's Sunforger and Archive, and uses the two extra green from Idlamok to activate the Elvish Reclaimer. Ryan has an answer though with Teferi's protection, saving his equipment. Trevor then resolves the Reclaimer ability, sacrificing a forest to go and find a land from his library. Ryan phases back in and draws for turn, and re-equips Akiri with the Sunforger in his main phase. And at this point, Trevor's found the land, putting out Deserted Temple from his Reclaimer's ability. Ryan then swings Akiri at Trevor during his combat step, who is stopped by Lily Reclamation Sage, and with nothing else, Ryan passes. Harry untaps and plays a Temple of Silence, scrying one. He bottoms it and then drops a Kitchen Finx. It comes in and gains him two life, plus a counter from Tyam seeing it enter. More mana is then tapped for Xiong Yong, which Harry then down ticks to put a plus one plus one counter onto his commander. At the end of turn, Trevor gets tricky with the Reclaimer, untapping it with the Wirewood Lodge, and then activating it again. This time he sacrifices another forest to go and find a Nykthos. Trevor untaps and draws, tapping Itlamok for some mana to help cast Nisa who shakes the world. He then plays a forest for turn, and upticks the walker without actually animating the land. He then recasts Freilies, and once she enters, down ticks her to try and blow up the Sunforger. This has Ryan activating the hammer in response, disattaching it, and going to find a spell. He grabs Boros Charm, casting it, and making his permanence indestructible. Trevor then makes eight green mana from his forests, and uses two to activate Nykthos, making even more. He then uses one of that green to activate the Deserted Temple to untap Nykthos, and retaps it, making even more green mana, 
When will you be satisfied, Trevor? He uses all that mana for a Drag of War Caller, kicking it 11 times. This is a lot, but I don't think it's enough to take everyone out. Trevor then moves to combat, and swings the two Druids and the Reclaimer at Ryan, and the Siege Behemoth at me. With the Behemoth out, it makes blocking all but useless, so I just take the hit, and Ryan thinks about whether or not he can survive this attack. He counts it up, and sadly can't, getting taken out. With nothing else, Trevor passes. I untap and play Mutavolt for turn. I try and animate it, but in response, Trevor uses Wasteland to take the land out. I cast a Goblin Lookout, I then play a Bloodmark Mentor, and once it's on the field, activate Krenko. This makes me another 9 tokens as the ability resolves, and I head to combat. I swing the tokens and the Mentor at Trevor, who blocks the Mentor with the War Caller and a token with the Force. Before moving to damage, I sacrifice the token being blocked to the Goblin Lookout, who has haste because of the Chieftain being out. This pumps all my Goblins by plus 2 plus 0. This means Trevor takes 52 points of damage from the unblocked tokens, taking him out. Harry untaps and doesn't find a board wipe, instead playing at a Murmuring Bosk which comes in tapped. He downticks the walker again to put a counter onto his commander, and then pays 3 mana to remove 3 counters and activate Tyam's ability. He mills his top 3 cards, but doesn't hit anything of relevance, and scoops it up to me. Game review time. So I do think Trevor was probably in the right for taking out Ryan, since Ryan was the most likely to have some kind of board wipe coming, and he definitely would have used it after Trevor kept blowing up all of his stuff. My 2-2 goblins presenting weren't very threatening, and if I hadn't been able to draw that goblin lookout, not to mention have a creature that gives it haste and be able to use it that same turn, I don't think I would have been able to take him out, and probably would have died in his subsequent attack step. Ryan's deck goes to show why he should run lots of responses, because he had to keep using them over and over again against Trevor's targeted removal. He just wasn't able to establish his board since having to leave mana up for the Sunforger, not to mention equip in it every turn, was eating up a lot of his tempo. Speaking of tempo, Harry playing 3 tap lands for the first 3 turns certainly wasn't great, and he was only able to cast Hermit Druid by turn 3. He also seemed to be missing any kind of mill or dredge engine, so it would be interesting to see Harry bring this deck back so we can get a better idea of how it works. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.